Welcome back to the channel folks and to another battle report. Now we normally record a couple of games at Nightly Gaming in Bathgate each month but we couldn't herd enough cats together for this month unfortunately due to one thing or another so we're having a quick game today myself and Mark. This is going to be a short format game so just turn summaries at the end of each turn. We're thinking about this as a bit of a try out, a bit of practice for the Flames of War Scottish Nationals that will be with us quite soon uh, on the 11th and 12th of May. Here's a couple of the prizes that we've got in for it already folks, so there's going to be a good raft of prizes here. These are from Overlord Games and I won't tell you what uh, categories are for yet, but we've also got other prizes including Terrain from Frontline Terrain and we've also got like Army Box, uh, other unit boxes and all kind of goodies. I'm also preparing something myself, this is just a a prize draw, you don't even have to be good at the game or good at painting to stand a chance of winning a very bespoke turn counter and it's coming along quite nicely. So there's links in the description below to where you can get the tickets, find out more information and where you can check out our sponsors, Overlord Games and Frontline Terrain. Anyway, let's go over, take a look at the lists and then on to the mission and take it from there. Right Mark, you're bringing yaks today, so what have you got? Right, I've got a bulls list. Um, we've got a tank formation and an infantry formation. So we've got three platoons of light Shermans. Two have got, two tanks in each have got 76mm. We've got two with 75s, and one of the 75s has been upgraded to a jumbo. Then we've got a HQ, which I've just got two standard 75s, light 75s. Uh, we've got an infantry company, which has got Two platoons of infantry. Both have got an extra bazooka. One's got an extra LMG. And then we've got a platoon of four 82mm... 82, I think it is, 80mm 80 80mm mortars. Uh, which have a mortar? Heavy, heavier mortars. 81mm uh, mortars. Yep. And then we've got a platoon of three 60mm mortars. One of them is a 10 machine gun at the moment because I haven't got the third one painted. HQ, normal. Then support, we've got a battery of priests, or five priests. So in terms of soft skills, these guys are... They're all the battle wearies, so they're careful, reluctant, careful, trained, reluctant, but they've got improved rally and tactics compared to the basic factor for that. And the tanks are um, aggressive, confident, trained, and they've got a better last stand and remount because of the late versions, which have got better armour. Right. And these guys are front armour 7, front armour 11, anti-tank 12, anti-tank 10, but as we've been talking, they've, they've got direct fire smoke, as does him, and then it's smoke, smoke, smoke. So you could potentially put down quite a lot of covering fire mm -hmm. in your advance. Yep, well, that's the, the plan. The, the basic idea is if I'm going to have to attack, because I'm generally an aggressive player, then I'm going to have to attack, then I want to have things that can affect the opponent whilst I'm coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go, folks. That's the Yanks today. So here's the list that I'm playing today. It's infantry. I'm going to go for a very much defensive mindset for this list. When you're playing infantry, it's important to remember that it's not enough just to sit on the objective. You need to be able to counterattack at some point. So I've kind of built that into this to a degree and we'll see if it actually works. But we've got a Volts Grenadier formation with three platoons. That's two of the assault type and one of the rifle type. I always like to play with three platoons of reluctant foot sloggers because if you need to pick yourself up and go somewhere, it's better to have that extra platoon that maybe isn't going to be pinned or will maybe get unpinned, able to move into the critical areas. So that's why I've got three. Now each of these platoons has got two Panzerfausts, but also two Shreks. And one of them has also got a heavy machine gun. That was a little point hanging over. You could use that for a lucky card, but I prefer to have my points on the table. And let's face it, folks, with the kind of luck I've been getting in games recently, get a lucky card, I might as well buy a return ticket on the Titanic. You know, it's just not going to happen. And then part of the formation, still we've got four pack 40s, and that'll be the ambush unit. Then four medium mortars. You know, I'm thinking, do I want the mortars? But just in case, they are a useful thing to have they may come up against infantry, so being able to dig infantry out or just even just pin them 
to allow these guys to run in with their um, better assault rating and the better rate of fire on the move. So mortars or you could take instead of that perhaps some kind of scout unit if you really want a spearhead. And then on the table at the start as well, part of the starting formation of 60%, three Marders 3Ms. So these guys are the careful, confident veteran types. They're really going to have to use that Stormtrooper move to stay alive though, because they've got no armour to speak of. And also they'll be vulnerable to artillery with top armour zero. But it's an extra anti-tank unit on the table at the start to back up the pack 40s. And then... I've not used these before, but I have seen them in lists, and that's why I've got them in today to give Mark some experience against them. We've got three Training King Tigers, that's 41 points. That is your reserves in one dice roll, folks. Now, these guys are, let me think, they're aggressive, confident, green. So you're not going to be having a great deal of success with assaulting with them, but they're going to be really good for knocking out enemy tanks. An important thing to remember, and it's something that's very commonplace with tanks that have good anti-tank, and tanks that have a long range. You can't just sit them at the back of the table when they come on from reserve and try sniping off enemy tanks, especially if they are careful at long range and cover the chances are you need sixes to hit them, whilst the objective is going to be under a lot of pressure. These reluctant guys will be getting hammered by assaults and such like once the shreks have been sniped off perhaps. Get them pinned, smoke, get the assault in against them. So when they come on, those King Tigers are going to have to race towards the objective to be the most effective. So, remember these guys are aggressive, they are reluctant, and they are trained, so they're not the best quality. So it could be a bit of a harem scarem experience. Today's mission is Bridgehead, which is quite straightforward and simple in terms of the deployment zones, as you can see here. But the unusual placement of the deployment zones presents challenges and opportunities to both players. The defender's deployment zone is quite small. You can see it's kind of squeezed into roughly half of one side of the table. So terrain's key here. You have to be able to choose one side of the table or the other that's got the best terrain for you in terms of line of sight, in terms of where you can deploy your ambush. Now because it's a small zone, that can be useful in that all the troops in there can support each other quite quickly and quite easily. But it's also a bit of a challenge in that everything's going to get battered by artillery templates, especially, for instance, if there is a, a volley template in there, it's going to catch a lot of your guys. We've got minefields, so it's going to help the defender quite a bit, but they can be approached from three different sides. So it's not quite so easy to block off a whole section, for instance, because the attacker can just potentially just go around the other side quite easily. It's deep scattered immediate reserve for the defender so you're not going to be quite sure where you're coming in with the reserves. That can always be tricky but it can also work out to your advantage because you can come in from the sides, you can come in up to 16 inches from the corners which could give you vital side shots. And there is an ambush but getting the right terrain that's tricky in this mission because it may be quite sparse you know, it might be overlooked by tall terrains but that could push ambushes back away from hedgerows and such likes. For the attacker, where well, they've got a bit of an awkward layout in the deployment zone, but they do have the ability to move down the flanks, totally change the axis of attack, and that can work in their favour, but it's a kind of mission where you can end up being funneled down very narrow approaches into a very solid defensive area. So it's not easy to make a push against isolated units that you can do against a formation spread out along the whole table edge for instance. So the attacker looks as though they've got a lot of advantages but it's balanced out quite neatly by the defender's advantages. Right folks, we have deployed. Um, now we're playing, what's this, Bridgehead? I Bridgehead, yep. This Bridgehead, yep. And I chose this side to deploy, this side here. Um, it can be a tricky mission to choose because it's a small deployment zone, ambush positions might be limited, you can be attacked on your flank. So I've just chosen this one because the main reason is I just didn't like the two big lumps of terrain, line of sight, blocking um, buildings on either flank 
I felt a bit vulnerable this side. I can at least properly defend these houses and maybe defend a wood. Um, so I chose this end. Mark, um, let's talk about your objectives and your pre-ranged in markers, actually. Okay. So with the um, deployment zone for the objective markers being in the centre, I put one and one to try and split um, Frank up a bit, but that's not a big, big area to, to be able to do that. Um, then I've put in my 105s arranged in marker here from my priests, and I've put my 82mm water marker up there, and my 60mm mortars here. All trying to actually stop Frank from being places over there, because I don't want him to try and deploy on the hill if I can avoid him, um, to discourage ambushes and other things. This one, because it's close to objective, to try and make him a bit further away from it. This one um, is actually to stop him deploying in this area, which hopefully I'll allow to, might allow me to push up this way, which is when you see my deployment, it's basically partly what's designed. Um, for the rest of my deployment, uh, the priests on the hill here, so they've got full line of sight basically across most of the battlefield. Then we've got platoon of infantry here, platoon of infantry here, the mortars in the centre, the company HQ here. The tanks are all sort of bunched up. If Frank had got first hit, I'd be in big trouble. Um, so we've got one tank platoon here to exploit the road. We've got two tank platoons here, bump here, one here, and the company HQ to, to allow me to threaten Frank from more than one place, basically, is the basic plan. Um, and hopefully get up there pretty close and uh, personal. Well folks, I've got my pack 40s in ambush, my King Tigers in reserve. I've got an assault platoon spread across here. You can see there's a couple of Shreks in there. Then I've got the rifle platoon, kind of like a big cut out, so to speak, um, just staying in command distance, cut out to avoid this pre-ranged in, and they've got Shreks here as well. My HQ's within command distance of both stands as they are, but it could get trickier if these HQ bases get killed to get rerolls, but rerolls could be really important. And then I've got my third platoon, which is kind of like my, my fire brigade platoon, ready to move off, um, if they're not pinned, to support up here somewhere. And this is another assault rifle platoon because obviously they're better on the move than these guys. Um, the martyrs behind the hill, so they can do, hopefully, but I'm not going to happen, folks. Um, blitzes and then shooting scoots. So, uh, I probably need to get some good results from anti-tank shooting to wear the tanks down and then hopefully get some pinnings against his battle-weary infantry. Remind you, they aren't pinning a four up, so... It could be it could be a bit of um, a comedy assault phase when your battle-weary infantry come up against my uh, reluctant... Um, False Grenadiers. But that's it done. We're all set up, ready to go. Matt's going to go first, we'll clear everything up and come back to summarise turn one. Turn one. Right, so <coughs> no <coughs> starting step effect in the first turn. <coughs> so movement, the artillery stayed put. The infantry platoon that was here has moved into these houses. The tanks have moved up to here. Um, the tanks here moved up. Two of them filled their crosses. I am re renowned for failing my cross checks. It doesn't matter what I do. I need an open battlefield. I should fight in the desert all the time. Um, the HQ moved around here. This, these tanks dashed over to here, and the infantry dashed up to here. Um, so firing, basically, I've removed. Well, I moved all my artillery. The one of fives are arranged in here to take effect on all three, four actually, of Frank's platoons. It's HQ, these two platoons and the mortars. And I've moved my 82 millimeters down to here um, to try and knock out some of these guys. And the 60 millimeter mortars have moved over there to basically try and get rid of Frank's mortars. Um, we've killed a couple of these guys, but um, no big effect. Uh, and the tanks and everybody basically fired at this platoon area here. Didn't do any much either. So, but we've been pinned all of Frank's front line at the moment, which is quite a, a useful thing from my perspective. Hopefully, we've been reluctant, it'll stay pinned, which will allow me to take the initiative on manoeuvre. Jamie turn one. So, starting with motivations, it went a lot better than I could reasonably expect. We've got um, unpinned the mortars, infantry, infantry. The HQ was tired out by that time, though, with the re rolls, so he's not unpinned. Pop Mambish on the hill, he's kind of slipping back, but he's up the hill. Didn't get any reserves. And then in terms of movement, 
they passed a blitz and subsequently a shooting scoot. And in terms of shooting, uh, they managed to range in on those mortars there. Got one hit but a passed save. These guys were terrible. Four shots, eight shots on fours, got two hits. Uh, and it only ended up with two bales. And then these guys had six shots on fives and got one hit and it went plink off a jumbo. So underwhelming to say the least. Let's see what happens when this artillery is coming in now. Ranged in already and I'm re-rolling saves. Turn two. Right, ready? Um, US turn two. Uh, so for starting step, we tried to get these guys back in. Uh, one of them got back in, one didn't. And these guys with coming to HQ's reroll managed to um, rally. Uh, then on to movement. Uh, all the artillery stayed where it was. These tanks moved up into here. This, if you if you cl look, uh, careful observer, not these buildings have changed size. It was easy the just to lift the buildings. buildings so the buildings, the infantry just moved to the next building. These tanks moved up a bit further up. Uh, this guy has decided he's not having any of anything, and he's just going to sit at the back here. We'll have word with him after the battle. Um, the infantry platoon, and so the tanks that were here have moved up into this uh, greater area. This infantry platoon took the wood. This tank platoon struggled about a bit to try and avoid direct shots from where Frank's got his main AT at the moment. And then from a shooting point of view, these tanks machine gun this platoon. These guys put a little bit of firepower into them. Uh, the These tanks and these tanks basically all concentrated machine gun fire into here. Did very little. There are some dead, but that was all artillery. So from an artillery perspective, they've done a bit of a change. The priests are now ranged in on the hill, where they managed to knock out one of the pack 40s, but didn't do anything to anybody else. Nearly got a bail on one of them. Rem, yeah. Uh, the 80, 81 millimetres stayed where they were, and the repeat bombardment managed to knock out three of this platoon. The 60s uh, tried to range in where the 105s were to keep this bit more pressure on all these platoons, but failed to range in. And... That was the American turn, basically. And the things got any plan so far, Mark? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'd prefer, obviously, to have kept more pressure on these guys, but basically, I'm, I'm pushing Frank back a bit. I made him deploy his ambush, which is what I wanted to do, because um, Frank's army's it's got quite a lot of close range AT, but his big killers are his packs, his marders, and the tigers, as and when they come on. Hopefully, not this turn. So German turn two, so first of all, starting step wasn't very good for re um start again. German turn two, starting step wasn't very good. The rerolls didn't help this time, except for the HQ. He managed with a reroll to unpin himself, but it didn't unpin them, didn't unpin them, and didn't unpin them. Uh, in terms of reserves, two dice but no reserves. So movement, they successfully did a blitz. This platoon here has moved up somewhere in these houses. Somewhere over here. And then in terms of shooting, the mortars managed to kill one of those uh, 60 mil mortars. Uh, these guys got, sorry, the pack 40s got two hits down here and managed to get both of them on the 76s, no uh, mistaken target, but one of them saved and then one died. And then these guys fluffed their lines again. One hit on that unit again, I think they did the last turn, and went on to the jumbo, blink, and then they failed their um, shoot and scoot, which is inevitable, guys. Uh, I find that uh, Stormtrooper rule great if it works, but it rarely does. So, not the hell of a lot happened at all. Oh, these guys also did, got three hits on them, but they were saved. Not a lot happened, guys, so I'm just basically sitting, getting a kick in, hoping I can actually hit something back, but I'm going to have much less assets to hit back with next turn, because they'll be rerolling successful saves. Turn three. Side step turn three, the American mortars unpinned, but then ran away, even with the benefit of coming to HQ. This guy didn't get back in, and this guy, with the side step, we moved on to movement, but this guy finally got over the hedge. Finally got over the hedge. Um, so the rest of the movement, they stay stationary, they stay stationary, except for the company HQs moved across here to give these guys a bit better morale. Um, they stayed where they were this turn. I was thinking of bringing them out, but this turn I've left them. These guys have moved up a little bit so I can get more guys shooting. The tanks decided to pull round. 
and hopefully put more pressure, more pressure on Frank. I think now I've got guys in four of there. Frank's gonna have to do something about that um, sooner rather than later. Uh, the artillery, because they ran away, the 60mm mortar barrage failed and disappeared. The ghost guys stayed on the hill and KO'd another um, AT gun. And then the mortar, the 80mm mortars, but the company HQ ranging over there. Managed to kill one of those guys over there. He got a pen, which is very yeah. useful. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, we basically did lots of firing and didn't kill that many people. Uh, we did manage to knock out the Marders, which was... All three. Uh, <laughs> all three, from this platoon here, um, which was a, a very useful flex. Now, France got his tanks coming on, and they will come on this turn, or in the next turn, or either, well, no, this turn. But he's got still got his pinned AT guns, which might be starting to get to, to the limit of range from his HQ. They can't get a reroll now. Yeah. Um, so, um, that's really it. We just killed a couple of guys over there. Um, kept the pressure on, ready to launch. We've, now pro we've got a couple of units to reinforce. I think France going to have to do something about this side at the moment. And then hopefully we'll be able to divide him. That's the plan anyway. But if I don't pass my rallies, I'll just sit there. Yeah. <laughs> Gemma turned three Fox One Tens and motivations. These guys didn't unpin. They didn't unpin. Reserves were coming in and rolled the back edge, so they've come on here, right in the middle of where all the danger is happening. There was a little bit of movement from the assault rifles and that's one shrek from this this platoon here. In terms of shooting, the mortars ranged in on the other mortars. Didn't get any kills, but I've got them pinned, got a hit. These guys, now let me think, they managed to get a hit on the HQ and killed one. That's the King Tigers. The guys stayed on the ground and there was quite a bit of shooting done over here. Um, combination of a Shrek and a Faust. There was two, there was something, what do I think I'm in it now? About six shots in total and four quite, five shots. Quite a lot, I think about, maybe about four, um, four Shrek shots, one Faust, managed to get a couple of bales. And then these guys got pinned by a combination of fire from the assault rifles, mainly in here, and then the remaining infantry who had line of sight. So, I killed a tank that turn, folks. Why? Killed um, over there. What the hell happened there? The guys did an underwhelming round of shooting against it again. Uh, it was one, one was pinged and one went to there, and I saved it. That's it. Um, um, they've done nothing. <laughs> I've maybe killed one tank. Uh, so, as things stand, I've revealed myself here. I'm a bit vulnerable. These tanks could easily come back in and have a go at me. I've at least got my King Tigers up. I need them to be up. In here, can't have them sitting back on the hill, shooting things at range, you've got to get up and protect the objective. Um, and see if I can actually hit something, folks, because that's been the biggest problem I've had so far. It's an aggressive army, but I'm not hitting much. Turn four. US turn four. Uh, from starting step morale, the guy that was here got back in. Uh, one of the guys over there got back in. These guys unpinned, and these guys unpinned. So, movement, uh, I brought most of the rifle platoon from the house here up, and I forgot to do something there, but it doesn't matter. I brought the rifle platoon up. Um, these tanks managed to successfully crossed, so they're in here. These guys stayed stationary. Uh, I think one moved up a little bit to get straight to the, the cover. Uh, they stayed with the They dug in, and these guys, one guy, it's my usual fate, failed his cross check. That was very good because they all passed their cross check, which yeah. is unusual. Mm -hmm. Um, and then these are the tanks moved out of the way, basically to get out of the way the Tigers. Uh, then from a shooting point of view, um, all the people over here fired, basically most people, because I, oh sorry, I put smoke down um, from my 81mm mm mortars to block Frank's artillery. I left it rather than blocking the whole thing so my artillery over here could still range in and still be effective over there, which might knock out two of the packs. And I've also bailed one of the uh, Tigers. I rolled a one from a save, folks. Um, and then the rest of the shooting managed to kill one guy over here. Oh, sorry, I wasn't shooting. Yeah, it was. It was just one guy over here was killed by, by machine gun fire. Mm -hmm. And then I launched an assault with my infantry and killed the guy here. No, um, you, you, you died there and I ran away. Oh, sorry, no, that was it. That's right. <laughs> I died. That's one of my dead. You put uh, two bases, only, cause you could only get two bases. Then. That's right. So Frank managed to kill one of them. We had isolated his guys, but uh, I missed him, but then he'd failed his motivation, so yeah. he ran off. So, got you. 
progressing against the other objective. You've got smoke, and you've still got one more smoke bombardment up your sleeve. So yep. it's um, looking pretty grim. These tigers need to well, get back in you, Egypt, and then go and do something. So Jim turn four, folks, in terms of motivations, first of all, he remounted. This platoon was kind of spread all over the place. Did not um, unpin the other platoon that was pinned over there dead. That's the assault rifle platoon, I think. Uh, so in terms of movement, these edged along the hill. They're underneath that template from the thing. I'm just asking for it, to be honest, but I had to get shots off this turn. Um, and that was the only way I was going there. Uh, I didn't go hull down because I wanted to stay close to my uh, little friends down here. And the guys, remember, pulled back. They couldn't dig in because they're not within command distance. The platoon commander, so they're just sitting there going, Goop. So, in terms of shooting, they managed to get two hits, one bailed, and one killed. Um, the mortars ranged in again. Oh, sorry, repair bombardment over there got another hit. But uh, did you make a save? Eh? Free, save with a successful reroll, yeah? I don't think I got a firepower on it. That's correct, I did. I am right. sorry, over there, yes. So, I've just got to hope they stay pinned. That's the only thing I can hope for there, folks. Hey, and they're closing in, folks, and um, I don't really have much to go after them with. So, uh, I'm coming up to turn five, and I don't think I'm going to be driving them off by turn six. Turn five. Hey, Mark. Okay, so US turn five, starting step, managed to rally these guys. He didn't get back into his vehicle. Um, there might actually be one of these guys, was, he was bailed out, and he managed to rally. Um, and then it's into movement. So the infantry platoon moved up. Uh, the that was the only movement actually. Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. But anyway, um, we have then rearranged our eighty millimeter mortars over there, um, and we managed to kill. Uh, I think you got a guy in the house. house. I think it was one of the rifle platoon. platoon. Um, we left the. I mean, I can read ranged in there. They did nothing. Well, actually, I rolled another one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, and then I rolled two. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, then, basically, we've had lots of shooting. Yeah, lots of tank fire. Lots of tank fire. We were trying to be clever, because the Tigers, we can't do very much to, and the, the terrain is going to be struggling to get down, especially as these minefields block off my trying to flank him that side, uh, flank that side. So, we missed lots of smoke from the 75s, and we managed to get one hit to smoke one of them. It was very, that. very bad luck. Uh, we then basically machine gunned this platoon to death, but it's still there. Uh, everybody else sort of shot. We killed a few more guys over this way. Two out of... This platoon here's taken a bit of a beating this time. Yeah, and we got a couple of guys with the... We reached our mortars over there and got a couple of guys. I think we managed to get one guy with the mortars. I think it was one mortars. guy with the mortars and then two guys from in here. here with... Basically, I think it was rifle fire, machine gun fire from these yeah. guys. Um, and that's all we've done, very little. So Frank's still in a good position. We're not in a good position, I'm just still alive. <laughs> we're, we're threatening both objectives, but uh, it's been able to whittle Frank down. Having said that, our monitors are over here, and they're now ranged in, so yeah. we've got a possibility of being able to do something um, next turn, hopefully. Um, I think Frank's going to struggle to get rid of me. I but... won't be able to get rid of you. Uh, that would take a, an absolute miracle. I'm just trying to hang on by my fingernails. So, German turn five, in terms of motivation, just everything failed with three rolls, it all failed. Uh, in terms of firing, the mortars have continually hit that platoon. They keep pinning them, but they've not been able to, they've not failed to save yet. Uh, I think I made four saves, three of them with rerolls, so I'm not getting, I'd like to deal with them, considering the threat they're now posing to that corner. Uh, the King Tigers just stayed put and machine gunned here. Oh, you pinned them, didn't you? you yeah. Five um, at the moment, they're a greater threat to the objective than the tanks are. So I've got two of them anyway. The rest of the guys have stayed on the ground. They could get some more, but they're pinned. And then I would not be going to ground on all these MGs. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so that was it for me, folks. A very, very short turn where I killed two bases of infantry. But for me, that's actually been... A good turn. Turn six. Okay, so US turn six. Um, motivations. These guys, good guys. Remotivated again. That's going to be curse it for next turn, of course. Um, we believe there's one of the tanks in here needed to get back in, so he got back in. And 
they didn't end the pin unfortunately um so moving rapidly on to movement they didn't move but they dug in and didn't shoot so to make it harder for them to front to hit me um they begins to happily where they were here my usual luck only one of the tanks got across so we still got one poor guy exposed um shooting right. and excuse me for not eventually we went remind but frank reminded me to move my hq up so we've actually got the hq somewhere it might do something get these guys moving um and then a shooting it was actually well the artillery managed to bail two of the uh, <laughs> two of the that's more that's three all three hit and are all two ones in that folks yeah. so then shooting was pretty pathetic um by and large um we machine gun these guys well I can't say, can't remember exactly who did what, but we were eventually by everyone's 75s almost shooting at them. We've smoked all three of them. Yep. He definitely managed to kill the Shrek that was over here. Uh, now, was it the mortars, the riflemen, or the tanks? I think a mortar got... got. We went to kill one person from this. So, oh, um, aye. There was one there, outside there. We killed the oh, there's one, one dead. What was your last time? Yeah. It's a long game, folks. It's a long game. Um, and we're, we're whittling them, whittling them. There's only about four guys left in that platoon, maybe about... This one's not too bad, but of course they're pinned and going nowhere. Uh, so that's basically it. We've, we've consolidated about the objectives, but we haven't taken them as yet. So all I've got to do in turn six, folks, is push them back. <laughs> hmm. German turn six. So first of all, didn't get back in, didn't get back in with a reroll, and then I rolled a one from my last stand, but thankfully... Uh, I passed my reroll. This platoon didn't unpin with a reroll. This platoon didn't unpin with a reroll. So in terms of shooting, the mortars managed to actually get to firepower this time on two of those uh, guys and failed the firepower. He moved over uh, just to be more central and away from the template where they can't roll above one. And he managed to get a hit and just a bail on a 75 failed my firepower. And that's it, folks, because nobody else can move. <laughs> Turn seven. Okay, so here is turn seven. Um, important things, motivations, and in fact, two motivations. Uh, those guys didn't unpin, even with the benefit of the CO, and these guys didn't unpin, which is actually quite critical because they were going to be able to Aye. do a lot of damage over there, uh -huh. or hopefully do a lot of damage over there. Um, movement, I'm going on a flanking movement on that side because I can't do anything to the Tigers frontly, so I've got to get someone that's behind them to be able to do something to them. Um, there was a plan. There was a plan. Uh, because it's tournament practice and we're talking about tournament time, um, it's now time to push on because you'll be running out of time by the number of turns we've done. So this platoon decided to push forward. Two of them, in my usual look, decided not to go across the uh, the hedge. The other two did. Um, oh, that's something I was thinking of doing, but didn't do it. Didn't do it, so it don't matter. Um, these guys moved up. Uh, as they didn't unpin, they just dug in. Uh, he's again, and that was basically it for movement. Shooting, we managed to kill the last infantryman from mm -hmm. this platoon that was standing out in the open. Um, we managed to hit one of the tigers, but it didn't the artillery, but it didn't bail out. I rolled another. I think one of them. One of them hit. It failed to save again. Oh, that one. one. Well, that was a problem. Is actually I rolled a two for my firepower. So yeah. I my firepower. Otherwise, uh -huh. double bail might have got rid of one. Exactly. Um, so anyway, we fired various. 75s in that and managed to smoke two of the tigers um, and that's basically what we did we've quite a lot of bullets flying around but nothing much happening um, so that's it that was American turn 7 wasn't it German turn 7 so motivations are just terrible folks I did manage to unpin the um, Sturmgewehr platoon mm -hmm. didn't unpin the, that platoon or the remainder of this platoon they never got back in again even that one with a reroll and then I only just managed to pass with a reroll the last stand on the unit again so in terms of shooting, he managed to get one hit and just a bail, folks. No, he got two. Killed him. Oh, I killed one. Way! Right. Um, I've now killed one, two, three, four tanks. <laughs> four aggressive Shermans. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so the only other thing that happened is I unpinned infantry. They moved out, went in for the assault, never got in. We're just going to say they're dead because we want to see if Mark can get a win next turn because we want to try and keep to tournament timescales and we're not worried about the minutia over there. Um, so, oh, as well, oh, the mortars again, folks. Hit, oh, hit three of them this turn, but there's still all four left alive. Just can't do a thing against them. Turn eight. 
Yeah, so turn eight US. Um, basically, these guys still fail to unpin. Um, with a reroll. With a reroll. These guys fail to unpin. So the last couple of turns, they've actually done nothing. Um, and then it was basically, well, time from a practice competition, you've got to do something. So the tanks came forward to assault this platoon. Uh, these guys launched an assault on this platoon. Um, but before that, we did some shooting. We managed to bail out the last tiger. So if it had gone on, the tigers might have run away. Mm -hmm. um, those guys shooting didn't do anything. They missed this turn, but they're in good right. position for next. Um, so basically, the, the two assaults that went in, um, this guys went in against the this platoon, and these guys went in against this platoon, uh, having gotten rid of the, the other assault platoon last turn. Um, unfortunately, got five hits, so pushed back. And these guys, uh, one tank was destroyed by, I think it was a Shrek, was it? I can't remember which one. Um, but we didn't manage to go in. We killed one guy. Forced him back, didn't force him far enough away from the objective though, Frank far enough away from the objective. So basically, we've almost got there, but not quite. Yeah, so we're going to call it a draw, folks. There was a bit of a massacre with a draw for the Germans, but we'll go over now for a recap. Hey, folks, recap. So, Mark, how do you think the game went? Um... It was a good game, and my, my overall plan sort of worked. I had to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery towards the end, but my, my focus of getting the infantry over here into this wood was A, it stopped Frank's ambush in this area, and B, it provided me cover for my guys, at least and to, it might be, may be able to threaten this objective, um, which then possibly for, for, forced Frank to attack me. Um, the minefields here blocked me from really using this side. Um, my artillery uh, was, was pretty much successful. Americans calling the artillery the, the king of the battlefield sort of thing. Um, they knocked out the pack 40s basically on their own. Um, and they basically took out the king tigers when nothing really else that could do it, certainly not frontally. And it wasn't until the final turn of the game that I managed to get a flank shot into the king tigers. Um, could have if they had not they've been pinned for about two turns so yeah. they could have potentially launched an assault this way to try and take things out frank's got a lot of firepower in his infantry platoons so it's it's very hard unless you've got um even when, even when pinned it's very hard to make a breakthrough in this um, mission they're all supporting each other yeah because they're so close critically actually these guys although not frank didn't manage to kill them he managed to pin them for two or three turns together which meant that even though I'd ranged in over here, I couldn't do anything to them because the artillery was the most effective thing to get rid of. It was four plus save, four plus a kill, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to use quite a bit of shooting to smoke the tigers to make sure that if they got back in, they well, it was harder hard to make because I'm aggressive. So mm -hmm. um, the basic plan worked, but not fast enough is basically the. Ah, it's finding this is a tough mission to find a chink in the armor. I think the the chink. That, that I would have seen myself, but it's no guarantee. Is, and of course, it depends when the, where the tigers arrive and everything is around the side with this platoon and potentially then getting into uh, an assault against these buildings so they don't have the supporting fire from here. But that's just the best in an ideal world. Mm. Uh, I could still have had two platoons over there for defensive fire. Mm. So it was tricky. When we were adding up dice, for potential assaults, I was like, okay, that would be them coming in there, it'll be 18 dice against you. Mm -hmm. Even with a smoke bombardment, the chances are you're still going to get eight, uh, what, five sixes out of 18, mm -hmm. five fives, five, five ups out of 18 dice. So it wasn't easy. As far as my formation went, well, it, it didn't really have much mobility in this game. First of all, because of the deployment zone. Secondly, because it didn't want you on pin. But even if it did on pin, where was it going? We tried one assault and it was just oh, you know nasty maybe i could have used smoke to help them that probably would have been a better idea but i was determined to try and kill those bloody mortars because they've survived i think four tons of repeat bombardments maybe three yeah. uh three well, tons because you, you're hitting one so i had a reasonable chance of saving one and even when you, you, you had three mm -hmm. i managed to save all three of them yeah oh well, no i think i actually got there was one turn where i failed two firepowers to kill them but that's that's my game, folks. I've also had not brilliant dice as well. They rolled more ones per 
tank platoon that I've ever seen in my life. This embarrassing tank training platoon came on the table in the King Tigers and tripped over their laces basically. And then many tank guns, the murders. I mean, you can see how many aggressive shamans that are dead. And I think the tiger killed three of them. Uh, so the murders and the pack 40s, needing fours and fives, managed to kill one Sherman. No, I think, I think it might have been two to tigers and one each to the murders and the... Uh, Basically, uh, yeah. underperforming. But there you go, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed the game. It's a bit of a slog, this mission. So I can see how it, it would be a challenge in a competition environment to actually get it done in time because there is no easy way for both players. As a defender, there's no easy way to get rid of an aggressive attacker who gets in your face. And as an attacker, there's no easy way to get the assault in when it's such a tight deployment zone. Mm. The only other thing I could possibly have done was this infantry platoon came in the battle a bit later, but it was the, with the deployment zone was to put that infantry platoon over on this side, mm -hmm. facing the infantry track. But that is an ideal defensive position because you've got um, yeah. build it, bulletproof cover. Yeah. So if I had come around this way, but then the minefields basically blocked me from that, so that might have been a, a, an alternative, but mm -hmm. it was a long way around, certainly for immobile infantry. they have been mm -hmm. in half tracks, maybe. Yeah. Um, but. It's a, it's a tough one, folks. Let us know your own ideas in the comments below. And as always, thanks, Mark, for playing. Thank you. Thanks to you guys for watching. And if you have not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and that means we'll definitely see you all on the next one.